There's a brand new Elixir package on the rise in the AI space called Rec LLM. It brings a unified interface to LLM interactions, supporting tons of providers and all of the latest models. Now that this space is starting to mature, having portability across models can help you tune your application cost and performance. And this package is built on top of the best network request package I've ever used, called Rec. Rec is a well-structured library with a plug-in system that allows it to handle retries, compression, and even perform things like AWS signed requests without any fuss. Rec LLM takes it even further than you might expect. I put together a live book notebook to show off some of what it can already do in its pre 1.0 days. Code is available with a link in the description. Let's get started. In case you haven't used it before, Livebook is like Jupyter Notebook for Elixir. It's way more than that, but let's stay on topic. You can get it at livebook.dev. And once it's running, you can click open from URL and then grab the URL of something like a GitHub gist. And that's all it takes to pull the code down and you can start using it. So this first cell just installs packages you can also install Python packages, but this one is all Elixir. And for this demo, I'm gonna use models hosted by Anthropic. So under the lock icon, I registered a secret that will come in as an environment variable. It's an Anthropic API key. So I'll set that API key into the rec LLM context for Anthropic, and we can get into it. Like I said, Rec LLM supports a ton of providers. This registry module has knowledge of all of the providers and models that are supported by the package. And it looks like we could do something with Cloudflare workers or GitHub Copilot. We could do things with Llama, LM Studio, if you're running things locally, it supports a lot of things. And model details are also available in the package, including pricing, capabilities, modalities, and token limits. These can be pulled from models.dev through a mixed task, but in this case, we're just using the stuff that came bundled with the latest release. So under Anthropic, it looks like we can run Haiku 4.5, the latest one as the time of recording, uh, but we could also run any of these other models and we can see the maximum number of tokens and the modalities, everything that you might need to know about these models. Now, if you already know what you're doing, you don't need to hit the registry. You could also just use a colon delimited string like Anthropic Claude Haiku, or a tuple with a provider model and some options. That way you can set things like max tokens uh, without having to instantiate a rec LLM model struct. But this is the way that I have it set up. So we're getting the model Anthropic Claude Haiku 4.5. And we can do uh, the most basic thing possible. We can just ask to generate some text and Claude knows that it is Claude, okay. But every provider is different, and there's a supported provider options function on most of these provider interface modules that let you know you can control things like temperature, max tokens, top P and K, etc. Now, the next demo is a little bit more complicated. So I will explicitly set a reasoning effort value, and I'm going to use the stream text function. So instead of waiting for the response to come back in its entirety, we'll stream the response down. As a brief aside, the user interface of Livebook can be controlled through the Kino package. Here I'm creating and rendering an output frame where we can render the streamed results. Then we pipe the tokens as they are streamed out into a reducer function, which will accumulate and concatenate the string and then send it as markdown into that frame. This gives that token streaming experience that you might expect. In fact, here we go. And then at the end, we can also ask how many tokens were used and what the cost was of the interaction. This uses that metadata that I mentioned before. In a real application, you might add this to the user's profile for billing and metering purposes. So in this case, we used less than one cent of tokens. It was a total of 503 tokens with an input and output split here. Okay, so it can do single prompts, but we can also carry out multi-turn interactions through context. Now this has an interactive form through Kino, which will become the user message for this prompt of a social media manager. Let's stream out that response and see what it comes up with. All right, that looks pretty LinkedIn to me. Um, but also I think that we could go a little bit further. Let's make it a little bit more pretentious. 
So we'll take another text area and then append to the context, adding another user message in response, and then stream that response down. Yeah, that definitely looks a lot worse in the best way. But modern LLMs support more than just text generation and conversations. Let's generate some structured outputs. A week or so ago, the only option for structured outputs in this library was via nimble options, which is a common Elixir way of describing data structures. Using this, we can ask for the details of Shakespeare's character, Juliet. And in a few seconds, we will get back an object that conforms to that structure, describing who Juliet Capulet really is. Easy enough. But if you want to describe a more complex structure, nimble options isn't exactly the best vehicle. So, JSON schema support was added. Here, we can ask for a list of characters instead of just one, and let's do that on Hamlet. Again, give it a few seconds for the model to do all of the hard work. And there's the cast of Hamlet with all of their roles and a description for each of those characters. This looks much more like what we would do in another language, and it works without any issues. But we can go further. There's actually a new schema validation library for Elixir inspired by Zod and Joy that I think is probably going to catch on. It's called Zoi, and these schemas are now supported by Rec LLM. So you can use this terse representation of the desired structure and send it off. And I want to highlight this again. The evolution of this method supported schema languages happened incredibly quickly. Honestly, this video might be outdated a few minutes after I hit publish. But this is the year of agents. So what can Rec LLM do for those? Well, of course, Rec LLM supports tool calls. Here, I've got a tool that pulls exchange rates from the US government using REC. This is then described as a REC LLM tool, which can run via the execute function. It does schema validation before performing the call and returns the result. So if I want to look at the exchange rate between the US and Japan, here it is in its history. Now, these tools can be passed into functions like generate text giving the model agency over its control flow. This dense function called run tools will likely go away as Rec LLM and its parent project Jito make agent workflows more simple and scalable. For now, just notice that it grabs tool calls out of the context, runs those tools, and then appends those results. So we run generate text, then run tools, and then finally, we pass that result back into the LLM with the markdown output stream and Kino frame that we used earlier in this demonstration. And after the first message, the two tool calls execute. And now we are streaming out an analysis of Canadian and Japanese exchange rates relative to the US. The model was able to perform research through tools and synthesize those results into a streamed report. And this is just the beginning. If you're interested in AI developments in Elixir or want to contribute to Rec LLM, you should check out the Swarm. It's an Elixir and AI focused Discord server dedicated to this topic. And while you're at it, go over to the Rec LLM repo and give it a star. All of the references and links are in the description of this video. This has been Code and Stuff. Thanks for watching.